Hey, Severo, getting ready for Purim? I love you guys. There's a recurring theme on Guard Your Eyes and on the boost that we've probably heard already a number of times, that the Yetzirah's biggest trick is to get us to feel down after a sin. Because when we're feeling down, it's so easy for us to give up and we end up sinning more. I once heard a great muscle for this. When a thief wants to rob a store, he sometimes brings along a young child with him. The child steals a small toy or candy and the owner of the store starts chasing the kid. Meanwhile, the thief takes advantage of the owner being distracted and he goes and empties the whole cashier. It's the same with the Yetzirah. He gets us to fall, but his goal isn't the fall. The fall is just a distraction so he can swoop in and take the whole prize, which is to get you to feel down and feel far from Hashem. Because once we feel that way, he's got us wrapped around his little finger. So this is one of his biggest tricks. Another one of his tricks is the exact opposite. He makes us feel a little bit too good about ourselves when we're doing well, so we get complacent and we forget that we need Hashem's help at every moment anew. So these two strategies of the Yetzirah often lead to a fall, either feeling too good about ourselves or feeling too bad about ourselves. So what can we do to avoid these feelings? I mean, they're only natural. When we're doing well, we tend to get complacent and self-assured. And after a fall, we feel down. What can we do? This is human nature. How can we avoid these unhealthy feelings? So it's brought down in Kabbalah that every Avera we do and every mitzvah we do are like garments for the soul. When we do mitzvahs, we clothe our souls with beautiful spiritual garments of light. And when we do Averas, our souls become covered in dirty clothing. Rahman al But it's important to realize that our souls themselves can never be tainted. Our neshamis are a chelik alikami mal, a piece of Hashem himself, like a diamond can be covered in mud, but it can never become inherently spoiled. When we recognize this truth, I believe we can save ourselves from the unhealthy feelings that we mentioned above. Because no matter how many mitzvahs we did and the progress we've made, we must remember that our good deeds are just garments that can be removed chas v'shalim if we're not careful and if we don't have Hashem's constant help. And no matter how many Averis we did, our filthy garments can also be removed with tshuva. The garments never damage our souls, our very essence. And therefore, it's important for us to constantly remember this and divest ourselves of our outer garments. Whenever the Yetzirah comes to us with one of these arguments, either that we're so special because of our many mitzvahs, or that we're so unworthy because of our many Averis, we need to shed these garments and remember that we're a pure soul that is one with Hashem. At every moment, we must serve Hashem as if we never did anything yet, not for good and not for bad. We need to learn how to live as a baby, just born, without any clothing and without even any midas. As David HaMelech says, imoi, Like a suckling child with his mother, my soul is with me like a suckling child. And this is truly how David HaMelech lived. He could be a fearless warrior one moment, and the next moment a sensitive and humble poet. Because David HaMelech didn't allow the garments of his midas or his deeds to separate him from Hashem. He was always connected to Hashem's will directly. We see in Tanakh something very interesting. When the Nevi'im used to say Nevuah, they removed their garments. It says also by Shaul HaMelech that when he came to Shmuel HaNavi, a spirit of Nevuah came over him and he began to prophesy. And the Pasuk says that he too removed his clothing and he too prophesied before Shmuel and he fell naked all that day and all that night. Every one of us has the ability to throw off our garments and connect with Hashem like the Nevi'im did. It says in the Mepharshim that when a Navi would prophesy, he would lose his mind. He would become like a crazy person. Like it says by Shaul HaMelech, when a bad spirit overtook him and he was acting crazy, by and the Targum translates it, Hishtate, he went crazy. Losing our minds and removing the garments of our Midas and our past can connect us to Hashem in the deepest way. And I believe that's the secret of why we get drunk on Purim. Purim is the highest day of the year. Even Yom Kippur is only called Yom Kippurim, like Purim. So on this greatest of days, we connect with Hashem in the deepest way. When we get drunk, we're divesting ourselves of the garments of our minds. We no longer feel haughty with our past. We hug the beggar, we roll in the mud. We no longer feel the futility of the struggle and the sins of our past. Nichnas yain yotasoid. We connect with our deepest essence with our soul that has no garments whatsoever. When we're drunk, we feel like we're in a dream, like we're looking at the world from outside our bodies. We forget our reality. It can be the most uplifting experience of the year if we use it properly. 
And that's when we're capable of the greatest tefillah and the greatest tshuva, tshuva of pure love for Hashem. I was thinking that maybe that's what Chazal mean, that we get drunk until we don't know the difference between Arur Haman and Baruch Mordechai. You see, there's a Haman and a Mordechai in each and every one of us. The Mordechai is our garments of mitzvahs. The Haman is our garments of Averis. But on Purim, we get drunk and we don't see the difference anymore. We put on a mask, we dress up, we cover up the outer garments of how we want everyone else to perceive us. And we connect with our deepest essence. Rabbi Sai, the lesson of Purim applies to us all year round. In a certain sense, we need to always be drunk. Like we said before, the Yetzirah's biggest tricks are to point our garments and tell us either how great we are or how worthless we are. We need to remove these garments of our minds that hold us back from serving Hashem properly. At every moment, we can connect to our deepest essence, as if we never did anything, as if we were just born without any past. And in this way, we can be saved from all the unhealthy feelings that so often hold us back from progress in Avodah Hashem. Wishing everyone a happy Purim that's just out of this world.